So is evolution happening now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, as we've talked, <clears throat> one of the interesting things is that evolution happens continuously for everything. As the environment changes, we keep evolving, moving forward. If you believe that <clears throat> we can see everything's evolving, then everything within this space that we know is evolving, then the space itself must almost necessarily be evolving. It sounds awfully complicated and difficult to live through. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all about adaptive modification. Well, I don't, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what I ordered on the menu. I, <laughs> I ordered, you know, okay, I grew up, I'm 21 years old, right. now I'm done, Yeah. and then <clears throat> I live, right. and then I die. I die. Well, I just leave that last part off. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, so you're saying it's like, the good news is it's a continually adjusting, self-adjusting manifold that's unfolding. Well, and the bad news is it's a continually adjusting yeah. manifold. Well, you're talking about the 21, 21 year old. Yeah. I mean, I wrote a blog post on some good, good research on this. You know, why we're crazy from 11 to 30. And they actually do lag, you know, ten, basically 10 years difference uh, to give this time to settle in. I mean, the idea was that you go through this period of being unsettled, as we all know as teenagers, and you're evolving. I mean, we're the only species that has this enormously long period of maturation, but it enables us the ability to adapt to a new environment. So we spend the 11 to 20-something, you know, early 20-something, adapting to our environment, whatever I think it is. Well, the thing is that it used to work, like we're all going to be always going to live in Trenton, New Jersey, then you find out you leave Trenton and you go to some Dubuque, Iowa, and you, turn, you find out you're a whole different ecosystem. So you've adapted to this ecosystem when you're in Trenton, and now you've got a whole other world. It's enabled us to, you know, colonize the planet. We can live any place. But you can't, if you stay there, you're okay. But if you start moving around, then you've got to readapt. So adaptation keeps on going on and on. And even if you stay in Trenton, Trenton changes. Yes, right? yes, you know, Trenton I, changes. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, I mean, I find that that can help just a little bit that, you know, particularly as we enter, have entered this period of such extraordinarily rapid change mm -hmm. that it seems weird. Mm -hmm. That you know, just to know, don't take it personally. It's not. It's not you. Right. Uh, that yes, this is what it's like to be part of a self-aware, dynamically unfolding system that mm -hmm. evolves. Is that you're never done. Mm -hmm. It's a continual learning process, mm -hmm. and the more you can surrender to the fact that it's a continual learning process, the more joyful and adventurous mm -hmm. that learning process is, and the less you'll try to dig in your heels and say, well, no, I just want to hold on to my piece of this rock mm -hmm. right here, mm -hmm. and then you suffer when the rock, you know, morphs into uh, Dubuque. That's right, that's right. Well, this is the whole new operating system that we've talked about before. <clears throat> we established the system 75,000 years ago, and now it's gotten to where we need to evolve something better. Because clearly, even in the last five years, I mean, life has changed for most functioning people in this developed world. And you can't run on the same system you were running on before. So we have to evolve. We have to keep evolving, or we're going to be dysfunctional. You know, there was a big thing, you probably saw this, recently where Go, which is supposedly one of the, the most complicated games mm -hmm. in the world, and one that cannot be solved just by number crunching. Mm -hmm. it requires intuitive insights. But now, you know, this, this deep thinking group at Google has beaten four out of five times one of the world's Go champions. They, they cheated. <laughs> they, <laughs> they used a machine. They cheated. <laughs> but no, exactly. But, 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 but the thing about this thing, I wrote a blog post on this particular guy, the guy who run, runs the Google program, is supposed to be just an extraordinary intellect, just exceptional intellect. And he already had developed this deep learning system that could learn adaptively. He didn't number crunch, but it learns how people respond and how people solve problems. It does it enough times, it learns how to do that game. Mm -hmm. And now it's gotten even smarter. It's played against the, one of the best Go players in the world. It's beaten him four out of five times. And he's learned. The machine has now learned even smarter because it's learned out of that process. And one of the differences then, see, like one of the reasons it learns is because it's rewriting itself. It is. See, and one of the big distinctions we might see between, say, the operating system that we're, we've been working with since the emergence of the eye, say, 70,000 years ago, and this operating system that we're pointing to now 
is that this new operating system has to be involved in a constant rewrite of itself. Mm -hmm. It's not done mm -hmm. once and for all. Now, you know, MS-DOS, I'm just running, here's the word processor. No, the essence of the new operating system is that it's involved in self-alteration. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different experience mm -hmm. of the world because it takes as its premise that the world is this dynamic, yeah. self-aware, unfolding phenomenon as opposed to here's my piece of the world, I have this, figured out this part within my piece of the world and I'm going to hold on for dear life. <coughs> How many studies now too on the obvious fact <clears throat> that we all have access to enormous information. And we don't process it the same way we used to because we can go offline and grab it. So we're going to evolve process to deal with that, a processor to deal with that situation. So deal with the offline <clears throat> processing of yeah. information. It's going to be yeah. different. It's going to have to be yeah. different. <clears throat> so where we're at right now is that we still have this operating system that acts like it's like I am. I'm Gary. I'm born. Mm -hmm. I'm Gary. Mm -hmm. Gary Gary's. <laughs> And then Gary is good at some things, not good at some other things, and he's done. Whereas what we're talking about is something that actually undermines even the notion of a stable name exactly. over a period of yeah. uh, one's life. Because yeah. one is not one any essential identity mm -hmm. over the form of a uh, period of one's life. And in fact, as soon as we fall for the idea that we're any essential form of identity, we begin to suffer. Mm -hmm. um, which is really very interesting in the context of, say, contemporary notions of identity mm -hmm. because, you know, now the idea is that we're suddenly recognizing that there are all these different forms of identity, which of course there always have been. Mm -hmm. But we need to perhaps take the next step to not only recognize that there are these forms of identity, but that these are provisional and self-undermining and not essential to who we are. Well, and, and Rich and Gary are ad hoc entities. There is no, you know, Rich or Gary sitting inside here running things. It's just a energy waves sweeping across the brain as an ad hoc basis changing and changing and changing. There is no fixed entity. And once you realize that, <clears throat> your investment in being discreet changes completely. Your perspective changes totally. And it feels terrible to be discreet, in fact. Yeah. You know, not, yeah. not you know, it, if, it, because you feel localized. You're literally at the crosshairs mm -hmm. of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you can feel that, like, oh, I'm a wave form going across my brain, then that means I'm continually involved in this rewiring mm -hmm. of myself. That's a dynamic, adventurous phenomenon to be. It's not exactly. a thing. Exactly. It's as if we've been laboring under the idea or metaphor that we were a thing mm -hmm. when we're not. A frozen thing. Yeah. And you're not. You're a dynamic, constantly changing, constantly evolving thing. And that feels better. That feels way better.